grace, mercy, and peace are yours. From God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text this Good Friday comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, you can say that the events of Good Friday are a crime scene. Tonight, you and I have to say, it's Jesus, Peter, and me. And it's all about death. Throughout this Lenten season, you and I have been to the foot of our Lord's cross, all leading us to this somber moment. And we begin to wonder, is there anything good to be seen here? And the answer is yes, the outcome. Because Good Friday's death is a murder in which you and I, in which we are pronounced not guilty. From the vantage point of Pentecost in our text, Peter helps us to understand the crime, and the criminals, and all who are involved. Who is involved in this Good Friday murder scene? God the Father is involved. Jesus is involved. The Jews are involved. Pontius Pilate is involved. Anyone else? Peter addresses his hearers directly. This Jesus, whom you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. And the well-known spiritual that you will hear in a little bit won't let it go. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? The answer, they crucified my Lord. Yes, they did. But yes, you and me, we crucified the Lord just as Peter said. The physical murder weapons in this crime scene were the scourging, the nails, the cross. But the weapon behind those weapons? Well, that's easy. The sin of all humankind. That murder weapon of sin indicts each and every one of us. The guilt of that weapon can be traced from hand to hand to hand all the way back to Adam and forward to the last person who will ever live. And that means that you and I are also caught in that net of guilt. And oh, what a terrible weapon we yield with our sin. The weapon is turned on ourselves. It's all there, right here, in our heart. Malice, hatred, greed, lying, gossip, slander, bigotry, pride, 
self-righteousness. All these things set the inner compass of life on a course of death. Just look how we step out on that course of death with our words and deeds. Look what murders family life, lovelessness, selfishness, words and deeds that wound and stab. Look what murders life in the workplace, greed, envy, jealousy, dishonesty, making a God of material things. Look at what murders life in the church, grudges, hard feelings, gossip, neglect of God's word and sacrament, lack of participation, lack of stewardship, and the attitude, I'm not available for anything. And we are the murderers. After a killing rampage across our lives, sin kills us. The prophet Ezekiel says, the soul who sins shall die. And St. Paul tells us that the wages of sin is death. Sin is thorough. It is a weapon of total death, spiritual, physical, and eternal death. Even then, sin isn't finished. Listen to Peter. You kill the author of life. Has there ever been a greater crime? Peter is saying, you killed the Son of God. We were there when they crucified our Lord. The murder weapon is our sin. What's the reaction? Peter tells us in our text. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Do you hear the concern? Do you hear the alarm? Yes, even the panic in those words? There was no question of the verdict. They knew they had been caught holding the smoking gun. And their desperation, why that echoes loudly for each and every one of us. But listen, because here's the reason we call this Friday good. It's here. In Peter's answer for those first hearers and for you and me as well, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Doesn't that make you breathe a huge sigh of relief? You know what that means? It means that sin, that terrible lethal weapon, that loaded gun that we were holding has now been neutralized. It means there is hope. It means there is a way out of death. It means there is forgiveness. What we see on Good Friday is sin at large, evil, injustice, pain, suffering, and death. But Peter tells us that God is in control of everything. Sin in, is carrying out its horrible mission. But Peter tells us that it all has to serve God's purpose. Peter says that it all happened with God's definite plan and foreknowledge. And so Jesus goes to the cross with all our sin, with all our guilt, Jesus bears our sin in his body on the tree, we're told in 1 Peter. He suffers the death that follows sin, more than physical death, the death of hell. Jesus tastes death for everyone. This is the Father's wrath, 
and the Father's judgment on our sins. Yet while it's our judgment for our sins, it is borne willingly by his Son, Jesus, all for our salvation. Because the Father declared Jesus guilty with our sin, he declares us not guilty because of Jesus. Basically, because God made Jesus to be sin for us, he now sees us without sin. Because Jesus suffered hell for us, we will not suffer the pains of hell. How do we know for sure? Peter again says that God raised Jesus up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. Over the darkness of Good Friday, we see that silver lining of Easter. With the rising glow of the sunrise, new innocence and a new life with God. This day is all about murder, death, our death inflicted by our sin. This day is all about Jesus' death for us in our place. So bask in the verdict, the amazing verdict. Look at the cross and hear Isaiah's words to us, not guilty. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. We are all like sheep who have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The blood of Jesus, God's only begotten Son, cleanses us from all sin. This is God's work through that bloody, sin-scarred, old, rugged cross. This day is all about death. Our Lord's innocent, bitter suffering and death. But more than that, it is about how he died. It is finished. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Good Friday ends in a committal for Jesus and an acquittal for us. This is the story of Jesus, Peter, and each of us. May his name. Amen.